Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow scientists, and distinguished members of the press, I come before you today with an amazing discovery. The subject was discovered living in southern Missouri by construction workers on a multi-million dollar housing development. The subject appears to have grown up without any human contact, a feral child, if you will, raised by a taxido taxon, an American badger. The subject appears to have grown up without any human contact, and it possesses no verbal language skills. During the few weeks since his discovery, we have learned very little. We are confident, however, that soon we will establish a rapport with the subject, earn his trust, and gain new insight into the mind of this fascinating individual whom we have come to call Brock. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Wasn't that a little boring? Boring? Yes, where is your showmanship? These people are not going to care if you just rattle off some uninteresting data. Oh well, smile. I come before you today with an amazing discovery that I believe were proved to be one of the most important anthropological and zoological finds of these our modern times. The subject was discovered living in the wilds of southern Missouri, isolated and uncivilized, surviving on a diet of rabbits, lizards, various birds, carrion, and living alone in the uninhabited woodlands. The subject appears to have grown up without any human contact, a feral child, if you will, a modern day Tarzan here in our midst, only in this case, the adoptive parents were not primates, but rather, we believe, badgers. Or should I say badger? Taxido taxis. The American badger is generally a loner, choosing not to live in sets or similar groupings as his European counterparts prefer. During the several months since his discovery, Brock has become less resistant to our team of specialists and has even begun to respond to verbal commands. Brock, say hello to the nice audience. Uh, hello. <clears throat> Brock has also become somewhat of an international sensation thanks to all the media coverage and the internet, of course. People Magazine recently named Brock one of the 20 most intriguing people of the year. What do you think of that, Brock? Hello. <laughs> He's become an extremely friendly fellow. We are still working on the answering of questions, however. Hello. <clears throat> Speaking of questions, does anyone have one they would like to ask? Is human speech a realistic expectation? I don't believe it is completely unrealistic. In some cases, feral children have been reported to speak fluently and even adopt a role in society. What kind of role in society? <laughs> Who knows? In the 16th century, the Prince of Bamberg, Bavaria, was said to have a feral child as a regular presence in his court. The boy, who was raised by cows, eventually adapted to his new life and even married. The boy was raised by cows? Really? Not all recorded feral children are raised by wolves. Those seem to be the most common, but there are reports of children being raised by sheep, bears, gazelles, and even in one case in Africa, ostriches. And now, badgers. Yes, that is correct. Now we can add badgers to the list. But isn't it a fact, Dr. Long, that most cases involving children raised by wild animals are found to be nothing more than elaborate cases? Why, yes, that does happen from time to time. Some early reports were even believed to be folklore, but that does not invalidate the importance of this discovery. Of course not, Doctor. I was merely stating a fact. Hello, Molly. Ace. You're looking beautiful as always. I thought the presentation very impressive. I especially liked the bit about Tarzan. It added a little dramatic flair. Well, who would care if all I did was rattle off uninteresting data? 
What are you doing here? Faker sent me. I've been following the story since the beginning. Dr. Molly Long finds an honest-to-goodness badger boy in the good old U.S. of A. Who else are they going to send? I've got the inside track. That's what they think, anyway. I see. Well, there he is. Go ahead, ask him your questions. He doesn't speak at all? Hello, how are you? As far as we can tell, he hasn't had any human contact since he was an infant. He never learned to talk. So how does he communicate? We're getting better every day. Aren't we, Brock? So why won't he answer? I don't know. Perhaps he doesn't like you very much. What's with the music? Does it soothe the savage beast? I'm not sure. How do you feel? Very funny. I forgot how witty you could be. If you'll excuse me, it's time for Brock's meal. Sure, don't mind me. Pretend I'm not even. As if that were possible. It's okay. It's fine, really. Eat. What's he afraid I... of? He was a slippery fellow. We couldn't catch him no matter what we tried, and nothing else worked, so we treated some bait. Treated, huh? Drug is probably a better word. Yes. No wonder he doesn't trust you. What are you doing? I'm earning his trust. See? Mmm, good. Try some. No, be careful. Relax, Ace. This is the only way we can get him to eat. This is our daily ritual. Molly! 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 Hello, Molly? Y yes, I'm Molly, Dr. Long. Do you know your name? I am Molly, and you are Brock. Me, Tarzan, you, Jane. Me, Tarzan, you, Jane. What is going on here? I'm sorry, Doctor. We tried to stop her. She wouldn't take no for an answer. No is not the word I care for very much. Oh, there you are, sweetheart. <clears throat> can I help you? You sure can. First of all, I'd like to thank you so very much. I'd like to give you a distraught mother's love and appreciation for accomplishing the impossible and reuniting me with my long-lost son. Your what? My son. Oh, wait a minute. Your son, him. Brock? That's right. I am Brock's mother. This is good. What did you say her name was again? Who are you? I'm Ace McKinley. I'm a reporter for the... Uh, my name is Badger. This is Eunice Badger. That's B-A-D-G-E-R. Oh, come on. Badger? Your last name is Badger. It is. Now, I had it legally changed to show that I am not ashamed of my son. I've come a long way to reclaim what I lost so long ago, and no one is going to stop me. I've wondered for years what has happened to my long lost son, crying myself to sleep those nights, longing just to look into his big, brown, bluish eyes. I'm longing to hear the words that every mother wants to hear. I love you, Mommy dearest. Now can I please have another one of your unbelievably tasty and wholesome Mrs. Badger pies? I've watched every news program and read every news article written about Junior. I even made this scrapbook. And now I am ready to take my place beside him as his loving mother. You get all that? Any questions? Junior? Mrs. Badger's pies? Mommy dearest? Yes, Junior. His real name is Charles Reginald Junior. And yes, dear, I bake and sell my own brand of unbelievably tasty and wholesome pies. Here, it's Blueberry Meringue, Junior's favorite. Yes, Junior, I am your mother. Mother? That's right. Now I'm here. 
then you'll never have to be lonely ever again. I want you to come and live with me in the house for your father, and oh, God rest his soul. With all of our days praying that the good Lord would one day send you back to us. And now you're here. Now we can be a family again. Family? I've had about enough of this. Please escort this woman out of here. I'm not leaving. Not without my son. Mrs. Badger, would you grant me an interview? What? What? Oh, yes. I would love an exclusive first interview with the mother of Brock the Badger Boy. My newspaper would pay top dollar. Oh, they, they would. Absolutely. The public wants to hear your story, Mrs. Badger. They need to hear your story. Oh, they, they do? Oh, yes. Now, would you do me the honor of granting me the exclusive first interview? Oh, it would be my pleasure. Let me start at the beginning. One day, while I was strolling through the park and pushing Junior here along in his pram, I was set upon by a pack of rabid badgers. They surrounded us. They just stood there staring at me with their beady little eyes and their flat tails thumping the ground. Badgers don't uh, have. I fought with all the strength of a mother's love. But in the end, their numbers proved too much for me. And they dragged Junior away to what I thought would be a horribly painful death in their dirty hellhole of a dam. A dam? Badgers don't... Can you believe the nerve of this woman? Barging in here and claiming to be his mother? Renaming herself Mrs. Badger? I wonder what her angle is. She's up to something. I just wish I knew what it was. I guess only time will tell. and wholesome commercial. Take one. Action! Hi, my name is Mrs. Badger, and today I'd like to introduce you to someone who means the world to me, my son. Say hello, Junior. Hello. Junior and I would like you to know that Mrs. Badger's pies are not only delicious, they're also nutritious. Look for them in your local grocery store aisle. I love you, son. Don't you have anything you'd like to say to me? Oh, um, I love you too, mommy dearest. May I please have another one of your uh, testy and flawlessen eyes? Cut! Cut, 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 Brock. What was that? That was terrible. That's what that was. Didn't your mother ever teach you how to read? Oh. You didn't teach him to read? Uh, I never got around to it. It was on my to-do list. He just recently started learning how to read. Didn't you, Brock? That's right. Dr. Molly Long is helping me to learn to read and speak the English. Oh, he's learning very fast. I can see that. Very good, Junior. Thank you, Mrs. Badger. Uh, <clears throat> Mommy dearest. That better. Let's take a break. We're back on in five, people. Oh, I, I don't understand. He read it perfectly in rehearsal. I, I'm sure it's just nerves. Uh, don't worry. You aren't worried, are you? No. Did I do something wrong? Oh, don't be silly, Brock. There's no shame in making a mistake. I don't understand how we got here in the first place. What do you mean? I mean this. Well, all of this. Six months ago, you were rooting around the wilderness without a care, completely oblivious to the rest of the world. Well, then you found me. You brought me here. I know. I know all of that. What are we doing here? Oh, well, well we're talking, yes? Yes. <laughs> Stop taking everything I say so literally. Oh, it's not your fault. 
It's mine. I should have anticipated the reaction to your discovery. I should have protected you better, shielded you. I don't understand. Are you afraid? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm afraid for you. For me? You're so innocent. I didn't plan on people trying to take advantage of your trusting ways. I didn't plan on her, Mrs. Badger, appearing out of nowhere and trying to stake a claim to you. I didn't plan on the damn pies. Why are you doing this? Well, it'll make her happy. And I want to make her happy. I don't believe she's your mother, Brock. Do you? She said she was. She has no real proof. Well, you heard her story. I heard a woman who doesn't know the difference between taxidotaxis and castor canadesis. Between a badger and a beaver. She described beavers in her story, not badgers. Well, why would she say she's my mother if she isn't? It's called a lie. It's something that people do. But, but why? Who knows? Sometimes we lie to impress people. Sometimes we lie to hide something, and sometimes we lie to get something we want. Well, like what? Well, like you. Me? Maybe she wanted a son so badly that she thought you were her only chance. Or maybe she wanted a way to get herself out of debt. An instant celebrity son just add water. Mr. McKinley, would you kindly tell me what this is all about? Thanks, Ford. You probably don't remember me, but I... I know who you are. What do you want? Well, someone's been studying his ABCs. I wanted to talk to you two. About what? You're the reason we're in this mess. You helped her. You sided with her. I printed a story. That's all I did. It was stupid. I was too anxious. What are you saying? She's a fake. I beg your pardon? I finally did some investigative work that I should have done a long time ago. Apparently, quite a few years ago, a Mr. and Mrs. Charles Reginald Brown were indicted for tax evasion. Miss, uh, Mrs. Brown declared ignorance, claiming the tax payment was her husband's job. Charles spent years in a federal penitentiary, while Mrs. Brown got off with a warning. There is more. Five prior arrests, three prior convictions, credit card fraud, and extortion. Mrs. Brown is not as sweet and wholesome as she would lead us to believe. So you're after money? Brock doesn't have any money. No, but he has something far more valuable. Fame. Think about it. We all know him. We've either read his story or seen his face on 2020. He is a celebrity. So? So? There is a lot of money to be made in celebrity endorsements. A few years ago, Mrs. Brown sunk whatever little money she had left into a small pie shop. It failed. She's bankrupt. Or she was. Until Brock here came along, Empire Food Distributors has signed a multi-million dollar contract with Mrs. Brown. The deal calls for several commercial spots featuring Mrs. Brown and her so-called son, Brock. Now she's got herself a big, fat cash cow. That is you, buddy boy. I'm sorry, Brock. Well, for what? Didn't you hear a word that Ace said? Uh, yes. Uh, Mrs. Badger wants to sell pies. I can help her sell pies. She said so herself. She told you that. Oh, yes. That's right. She said people would like to buy pies from a loving family. Our family. But you're not a family. She's not your mother. There are DNA tests we can use to prove it. She's using you, Brock. She's using you for her own personal gain. Well, so what? So are you. You're using me to get your story. And even you're using me, Dr. Molly Long. That's right, Junior. She used you to make a name for herself in the scientific world, just like I told you. Wait, Brock, it's true that Thanks to you, I've gained more attention for my work than normal. But that's all. I haven't tried to make any money off of you. Oh, no. What about your book deal? Book deal? Wait a minute. You signed a book deal? We're in negotiations. My agent doesn't think it's prudent your to Your agent? You have an agent? I don't have an agent. 
agent? Oh, oh, I have an agent. A very nice man. Hey. Even you have an agent. Well, naturally. He's working on selling the rights to my movie. Why don't I have an agent? You're selling the movie rights to his story? You're writing a book. It's a scientific journal. I should have an agent. I'm the celebrity. Isn't that what you said? That's right. You are. You are a star. I'm a star. I? I could be your agent. You? You're a reporter. Ace, you can't be his agent. Why not? I know a lot of people. I have connections you would not believe. People know me. I'm somewhat of a celebrity myself. Really? You betcha. Everyone knows Ace McKinley is a force to be reckoned with in this town. Stick with me, kid. These two are only holding you down. Come on, Junior. We do not need him riding our coattails. Don't listen to her, bro. Dr. Molly Long, you said I was a person and not a possession. Isn't that what you said? Yes. And as a person, I have the right to make my own decisions, my own life. Yes. Junior, don't listen to her. You need me. You need my guidance. I don't need you. I don't need any of you. Junior! What are you saying? I'm saying leave me alone. Oh, but what about my pies? We had a deal! Leave me alone! You too. Good luck, Brock. I hope you know what you're doing. Just don't forget who you are and where you came from. winding down, and our time is very, very short. Most of the awards have already been given out, and now, the big one, the Coup de Gras. I am very excited to be presenting this award to a group whom I feel has been one of the most influential forces in music today. They fuse driving rhythms, beautiful melodies, poignant lyrics, and a strong political message into one of the most exciting musical movements of the last decade. Here to receive this year's Album of the Year. You know them, you love them, the Rabbit Fanimals! Wow, wow, wow! We did it, we did it! We sure did, I can't believe it, what a year! What a year, this is so unbelievable. If they would have told us a year ago that we'd not only win Album of the Year, we get a chance to share the stage with Brock, the Badger Boy. We would have said, no way, you're out of your skull. It'll never happen. But here we are. With the award and Brock. Give it up once more for Brock, everybody. That's right, he's one of our heroes. It's true. This man has faced such hardship, such adversity, and yet he keeps on trucking. That's why we'd be honored, Brock, if you would share this award with us. Um, me? <laughs> This award is for you, man. For all of us who have overcome. Oh, um, I don't Come know. on, don't be shy. <laughs> it's perfect. Brock and the rabbit animals. Kicking ass and taking names. Woo! Come on, say yes. Please, say yes. Well... Dude, just say yes. Okay. <laughs> right on, you heard it here first, folks. The rabbit animals and their biggest fan, Brock. So what's your favorite TRF song, Brock? Um... The rabbit animals. Pay attention. Oh, 
<laughs> so what's your favorite song? Oh, what's your favorite album? Well, well, um, well, to be honest, I don't really listen to your kind of music. What? What kind of music is that? What? What are you, a racist? You're prejudiced now? Oh, no, no, no. All I'm saying is I don't listen to, um, contemporary music. <laughs> but you said all those nice things about us. Well, I... To be honest, I was just reading off of a teleprompter. They told me what to say. I don't even know who you are. So you're a fake as well as a bigot? I can't believe it. You were raised by rats, but you're too good for us? We are so out of here. Thanks for the award, freak. some guts, kid. I didn't pick a flight. Sure, sure, whatever. Either way, it was quality entertainment. I told you to leave me alone. For what? Extra, extra, read all about it. Badger bombs at the box office. Brock tanks on the big screen. Well, Junior, I hope you're happy. The movie failed. It didn't even make it through the first now, Empire Foods has negated my contract. Mrs. Badger's unbelievably tasty and wholesome pies are finished, ruined, kaput. Oh, so much for an alleged son's love. Leave me alone. Oh, gladly. And let me tell you something. You're over. Your time is nearly through. Good. And another thing. I'm starting to doubt that you really are my long lost son after all. <laughs> My son? I don't think you are who you claim to be. I never said I was your son. You did. Well, that's all irrelevant now, isn't it? Goodbye forever. <laughs> First the Phantomals, oh. then the folks at music television turn their backs on you. Your supermodel girlfriend leaves you. And now, Mommy dearest, Oh, well, your ship is sinking and all the rats are deserting. What are you going to do now, Brock? Who's going to protect you? I never asked for any of them, for their attention, for their praise. All I wanted was to be left alone. Well, that's pretty much your only option now, Brock. The public doesn't care anymore. You're old news. I don't care. So what's next? I don't know. Well, let me tell you. You'll fade away into obscurity. Oh, you may appear every now and again on a television documentary. Brock, where is he now? Or on local radio. Perhaps you'll rent a small garden apartment to remind yourself of home, meet a nice, non-discriminating woman, and raise a litter or two of pretty unremarkable children. You'll live a quiet, uneventful life, yearning for the good old days when you thought you were someone important. Or maybe you'll slough off the civilized existence altogether, immerse yourself into nature, burrow your way down into the warm, comforting soil, and never be heard from again. That is, until the next tractor comes along and rips open your sanctuary. Oh, and don't worry about Molly. She'll forget all about you. She probably already has forgotten all about you. You don't know that. Don't I? It was the same with me. I wasn't special. Oh, I thought I was. But no. I served my purpose. You have served your purpose. And now she has left you to the jackals. No. Where is she then? She never cared for you. Not the way you cared for her. Your feelings for her were an embarrassment. She thought it was absurd. Disgusting. She was ashamed of you. No! Ugh! This isn't what I wanted for you. What did you want? 
I guess I never thought that far in advance. I wanted to show you things. The world, modern day, the people, the laughter, the joy, the humanity. The sorrow, the hurt, the tears. That's a part of it. But why? I wish I knew. The world is so beautiful once. I never meant for any of this to happen. What did you mean for? I am sorry. I don't blame you for this. Hey, do you remember Brock the Badger Boy? Who? You know, kid was raised by badgers. He was real big for a while. I guess you could say he was a celebrity. Maybe. Wasn't there a movie? I think so. I never saw it. But you know who I mean? How am I supposed to know? You brought him up. I think I read somewhere he's in jail. Shot someone, robbed a bank or something. Isn't that always the way? It's a shame. I really thought he might be different. I was rooting for him. How typical. How predictable. 